Today we're going to look at one of those modern LED lit fire exit signs that have been replacing the old incandescent ones in recent years. They just haven't lived up to the hype and they are burning out left, right and center. Today we're going to tear one down. Of course everybody knows what this is, right? This is the uh, new ridiculous exit signs that have been springing up everywhere. When I grew up, the uh, universal sign for exit was a big, four big letters, E-X-I-T, red lit up by a couple of 15-watt tubular incandescent bulbs that lasted like, you know, 30,000 hours or so. They went forever. That was the, the old exit sign that uh, I that we all saw here, at least, at least in this part of the world. But recently, this is the new breed of sign that's been showing up at, at you know, in businesses and, uh, and establishments everywhere. And I just happened to be throwing a bunch of junk out from my work truck at work and I found a bunch of these signs that somebody had thrown in the garbage can. They can't be that old because, uh, you know, these ones haven't been around that long. And I thought, well, I'm going to grab these things because these would be perfect for projects, right? Take this out, put a dark glass display in here, paint it black, and put a digital clock in behind here, for example. I thought these would be perfect just for cases because it can be mounted, right? And they can stand up like that. I can can put my Nixie tube clock inside here, nice dark plexiglass in the front, paint the thing black. Now I've got a Nixie, cl Nixie tube clock that stands up. So I thought these might be great to have just as projects. But I, I curiously, I was wondering why these things were tossed out. Now obviously these have a light in them, and I don't know whether the light works, so let's find that out. So I'm just going to connect it up to my cheater cord here. Now this is plugged into my... Uh, isolated power supply. I have this on my light bulb supply, so if, the, if, the, if they were to short together, nothing's going to happen. Uh, as you can see, all that's going to happen, if I short these together, all that's going to happen is the light bulb's going to light up. But I'm going to put power to this thing now and see if this thing lights up. Ah, it does. It doesn't light very bright. Maybe that's why these things were, were tossed out. This is the new breed of LED fire exit. And, well, as everything else LED shows, LEDs just haven't cut the mustard they just they are crap and I think it's showing up now in, in these new breed of fire exit signs that are being used is that they just they aren't lasting I mean look at this thing it's ridiculous I haven't opened it up yet we're gonna see what's inside here I'll show you what happens if I short this together see nothing other than my light bulb comes on this is my I would only if you're going to build yourself a cheater cord like this for testing you know put an incandescent light bulb or something in series with it so that if you're if your leads were to touch together, all you're going to get is an amp or so through it if you're using a 100 watt bulb. And uh, you're not going to run the risk of uh, having major sparks. If you need more power than that, then be, certainly be certain to uh, put some tape around them or something. Anyway, um, let's uh, crack this thing open. Let's unplug the power there. Let's crack this thing open and see what, exactly what is inside one of these new frangled LED fire exit signs which looks like they're living up to the reputation of LED as, as not being very reliable. So we open this thing up and inside here we have a power supply. We have a transformer and it's got one, two, three, four, five, it's got six LEDs. Let's plug this thing in and see what uh, what ones are lighting up. Okay, well, they're all lighting up, but as you can see, they're not bright enough. They're nowhere near bright enough. And it's, this, these, these also have a backup battery in them, right? There's a charge light on here, so there's a battery in here somewhere. Looks like it's right down here on the side. So they would operate during a power failure. But, as you can see, these LEDs are not bright enough. They're nowhere near bright enough. In fact, I should go get the other five that I grabbed and we'll test them all. I bet you we'll find that all of the LEDs, every one of them, is bad. Which certainly doesn't uh, say much for LED technology. Something that's supposed to last, something that's supposed to last hundreds of thousands of hours being used in something as critical as an exit sign and they're failing faster than the incandescent bulbs that they replaced. Now despite these are being pretty dim, if I turn out all the lights in here Okay, well, the camera doesn't really do it justice because the camera brings up the, the light level. But it actually is, it is fairly dim, that's for sure. If you were, 
if all the lights were out and they were in a totally dark room, I guess the batteries also are not holding a charge. But uh, it is it is much dimmer than it looks on camera. By com by comparison, you'll see how much brighter the uh, my sign is. Even the little TV displaying the time it's given off more light than this thing it is really quite dim also it appears that these two are brighter I don't know how it comes across on camera but these ones here are more yellow these two are brighter than these ones these ones are really quite dim compared to these other two which I guess it does show up a little bit better on camera but if I hold it up like that but uh, definitely these two lights are brighter than the others. I'm just going to get the other signs and we'll see how bad they are compared to this one. I mean, obviously these aren't going to be something I'm going to fix. I just wanted these for the plastic cabinet because I've got some solid backs. Like this one's got the exit sign on both sides, but I actually have a solid back for a few of them that were, you know, used at the end of a hallway, for example. And um, I think that they might come in handy just as a project box for putting stuff in so that's what I picked these up for was just the plastic cabinet but I figured I'd plug them in and show you guys what's inside and we'll take we'll take apart the uh, the board here and do some voltage measurements and stuff and see how these things work there's two more of them we'll connect up the next one here and see whether it's any brighter and again very dim lights as you can see again they're very dim and the third one so I have a feeling that all three have got the same problem the lights are bad in them all And again, this one here also, the lights are pretty weak. But again, we've got some that are, these ones, these three are brighter. These two here and this one here are pretty dim. Certainly not as bright as uh, you see them when, when these are working properly. You can see these exit signs lit up even in like a store that's got lights on in it, right? They're actually quite bright, but uh, in this case, they're not. It's just uh, bad LEDs, that's just a problem that is becoming more and more common these days is that these LEDs, which are supposed to last for a long time, they just haven't been lasting. Let's uh, tear one of these ones down and take a look at the circuitry. So we'll remove the front cover as well. This reveals the wiring inside. Looks like it's got a red wire as well, so that if you're on a 240 volt or 347, okay, 120, and this one's neutral. So this is for the red wire is for 347 volts. It's just, it's just tagged here, you see. So the red wire is not being used. I thought it would be 240, but I guess it's for this is for commercial buildings, right? Because a lot of a lot of commercial buildings that would have uh, a 600 volt uh, three phase, the single phase would be 347. So it's got a dual winding transformer. Looking at the uh, some of the printing on the board here, we'll pull the board out. Here's the battery pack first of all. Take a look at the battery pack. We'll just unplug it. Oh well, that might explain why. The battery is not working. Uh, one of the wires just broke it off of it. It's an ICAD battery pack, so we might be able to fix that. The battery pack might be okay. It might be just the wire broke here. Or it got cut, but it kind of looks like the wire broke. So maybe we might be able to fix the battery on this thing. Let's just try that. So I'm just going to cut open the back of the battery here a bit. I 
measure the voltage. See if the batteries are charged. They're probably not because it's probably been sitting like this for a while. But uh, here's our negative terminal. So I'll put the positive lead of my meter on that terminal and we'll find that the batteries are in fact have 3.3 volts. So the batteries are actually charged. So that's what's happened on this one is that this this wire is broken so we can fix that pretty quick. Just turn on the soldering iron and we'll resolder that wire. I was thinking probably the reason why they continue to use nickel cadmium batteries on things like these as opposed to lithium batteries as well. Lithium batteries have a nasty habit of burning. <laughs> if you're in a fire you wouldn't want to have your lithium battery uh, add to the fire right <laughs> on your exit sign. That's the last place you'd want to have a lithium battery that could catch fire. And as you can see the uh, the LEDs are lighting up on the battery so the battery is working. Maybe it's possible that the reason that the battery was cut like that, I might find that they're all cut. Maybe when the sign was taken out of service, they just ripped the wire out rather than unplug it. Anyway, that's we're going to pull this board out of this thing. It just, it just unsnaps by pressing down this little release here. And the board should just pop right on out. See, now I've got myself a nice little frame that I could uh, mount other stuff in. And I'm thinking this would be perfect for, you know, mounting a uh, mounting a Nixie tube clock or a, uh, one of my VFD clocks, uh, mount it inside here and um, get some dark glass to cover up. You know, get some get some dark glass or dark plexiglass or colored plexiglass to replace this, and yeah, it would be a display in the middle of a really quite a large, really quite a large frame. But I think that might look kind of cool. So that's why I grabbed these things was just for the plastic cases, not so much for the transformer or anything, but the extra parts here, the transformer and the uh, the parts on here is actually a bonus. Let's just take a look and see what this IC is on here. So the IC it looks to be an HTC 34063A. So this is a DC to DC converter that's used to convert the voltage from the power supply to suitable voltages for things such as charging the batteries and powering the LEDs. And of course what we know is the transformer here, 347, 120 and neutral. And the output is 10 volts, so 2 times 5 volts. So it's going into a full wave rectifier. So let's just check some voltages on this little board here. So these are our, our main terminals here. So about 14 volts. Seven volts, center tap here. So seven volts to one side, and seven volts to the other. So it's a little higher, but my input voltage might be also a little bit above because uh, I haven't checked to see what my uh, my variac is set to. Let's just see what we're actually giving this thing. 126 volts. That would explain why. We'll just turn this back down to 120. There we go, we're at 120 now. So now we should be getting about five volts per, per, per leg here. Which we are, we're getting six, so close enough. Okay, so let's just check and see what uh, voltages we get out of this unit here. This is going to have the full wave bridge rectifier in here so this filter capacitor here should have about 15 volts on it which it does. Bring the meter into the shop so you guys can see it. 15 volts and over on this cap here 
about 20 volts. If you listen in the background, you can hear my resident bald eagle up in the tree. So each of these LEDs is going to pass. What do we got here? Looks like they're all in series with each other too. So we've got three volts across each of these LED junctions. So those three are in series. Three volts. Looks like all the LEDs are all connected in series with each other. Interesting. Interesting way they're doing it. So then the, the uh, buck converter here would be, or the boost converter would be to step up the battery voltage because if I go across the LEDs, you can see I've got like 19 volts across the LEDs. The whole array of LEDs, 19 volts across it. It's interesting that they're doing that. They're stepping it up even though the secondary of the transformer is only putting out you know about 10 12 volts it's 15 volts here off of the rectifier they're using the converter IC here to step the voltage up to 18 volts therefore when the battery is connected which it is now right if I press this button and it's now switched over to battery if I unplug the power they're now running off of battery we should see that this one probably will drop down to zero, which it has. There it goes, right? This is the power supply coming in. But if we look at the output here, this is now the, the battery voltage, which is uh, only, what, about, uh, uh, about 3.6 volts, I guess, right? 1.2 each. So we've got 3.6 volts from the batteries. Actually, it's 2.7 because the batteries are weak. Um, they're, they're coming back and the, the converter IC here is boosting the voltage back up so that we've got full voltage. They're, they're, they're dying now because this battery is not charged, but we've still got 15 volts across the LEDs. As you can see, the battery is not charged. But it's only been on sitting on charge for a couple of minutes there. Looks like each of these LEDs now that they're getting dim has got two uh, LEDs in each one has two junctions in each in each die. If I plug the power back in, let the battery charge up a bit there. But anyway, that's that's that. So of course, before I go, um, when you have a a double winding transformer like this. This one will actually have about 300 volts on it if I measure between the neutral side and the transformer here. 338 volts is coming out of this because it's basically operating like an auto transformer on the primary side. So make sure you keep that lead covered up or you could get yourself a pretty good jolt. Thanks for watching.